Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. I'm now answering question number four from the October 2023 Pure Mathematics P4 International A Level and Excel exam. This question here is one of the most uh, disliked topics in P4, which is proof by contradiction. And it's disliked because it's something that's fairly new to the A Level syllabus. And it's something which is rather abstract sometimes. So students can't really sometimes appreciate the, you know, um, the topic that well. So, um, you know, it's not really that difficult, to be honest with you. And if you concentrate, I'm sure you will be fine with it. It's just that you just don't know what type of questions come up. Sometimes it's algebraic, more, sometimes you have geometric type of questions, uh, sometimes more kind of like, you know, rational type of questions. But um, anyway, let's get started with this. So um, just a little background, proof by contradiction um, is basically where you want to prove a statement, okay? And to prove the statement, what you do is you assume the opposite of that statement and you show that leads to some sort of illogical situation, which proves that what you assumed was false. Therefore, the original statement that you're trying to prove is true so for example a very basic example which has which is full of holes but just to give you an idea if you for example are you went to school in the morning and you came home you, you had a few free lessons at the end so you decided to come home a bit early you came home you got a bit tired you you just fell asleep on the sofa right or you went back to your room and you fell asleep and your dad comes home a bit early from work and he sees you sleeping and he assumes that you didn't even go to school in the morning and he starts having a go at you, saying, you know, what you're doing, how come you're, you didn't go to school, you're lying in bed, I'm paying all these fees, blah, 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 whatever. And you're like thinking, oh, no, you know, how can I, how can I, you know, prove to him that I went to school? So you say, okay, you're going to you're gonna go through proof by contradictions. You say, okay, dad, just assume, let's assume that I did not go to school, right? So if I did not go to school, then... I would be marked absent on the register. Okay, that's a logical conclusion from that. But if you call the school secretary now and ask the school secretary, you know, the school secretary will tell you that he is marked in the register as present today. So that means I went to school and, you know, I just came home a bit early because I had a few free lessons. So dad comes out to school finds out that you are actually marked present. So then he understands that you actually went to school. So you kind of proved by contradiction because you said, let's assume that I didn't go to school, which means that you'd be marked absent on the register, but you were marked present on the register. There's a contradiction there. You're not going to school leads to you not being marked on the register, but you actually are marked on the register. That's a contradiction, which proves that this assumption you made is false. So what you're trying to prove that you did go to school is true. That's an ex a very simplified example of this. Another one, a bank robber, like, you, like someone accuses you of robbing the bank. So you say, okay, you know, they, they, you're saying I robbed the bank. Okay, so I want to prove, I'm going to prove that I did not rob the bank. So you, that's what you're trying to prove. I did not rob the bank. But you're gonna do it by contradiction. So you say, okay, let's assume that I did rob the bank. So you, you're assuming the opposite of what you're trying to prove. Okay, you're trying to prove you didn't rob the bank. So let's assume I did rob the bank. If I rob the bank, that would mean that I have lots of money. That would mean that I'm rich. Okay, and I'm not rich. That's a contradiction. Therefore, I did not rob the bank. Again, a very simple, uh, simplified example um, with lots of holes in it, you know. However, to give you an idea of how the whole situation works. So in this particular question, prove by contradiction. So we have to use contradiction. You can't use methods of P2, uh, P2 where you would, you know, prove this just algebraically that this is true okay this could be a p2 question actually but it would just say prove that for all positive values of k this is true and then you would do it in a slightly different way we want we have to do it by contradiction here okay that's what the um, question states for all positive values of k so we know that k is greater than zero okay so that's important here all right for all positive values of k all positive numbers k k plus 9 over k is greater than or equal to 6 so the first thing you do is you say, let's assume, I'm gonna try and be on my best handwriting here. I know it's pretty bad my handwriting. Let's assume 
that k plus 9 over k is less than 6. That's like the contradiction of that. k plus 9 over k is greater than or equal to 6. Okay, and k plus 9 over k is less than 6 is like the opposite statement. Okay, um, for all for all positive k values. For all positive k values. All right, so now this will lead us to some algebraic expression which hopefully will show that this doesn't make sense. Okay, so we're going to start off with this. Now I want to rewrite this in a form where I can see we've got inequality here, so we're going to think about greater than, less than, minimum values, maximum values, you know, that kind of thing. So quadratics, completing the square, finding minimums, maximums, these things will kind of should be floating in our brains right now, right? So we think, let, let's see if we can rewrite this in a way which we will end up with some sort of quadratic. And we can see that if we multiplied both sides of this inequality by k, you'll end up with a k squared and a constant and a number term. But can we multiply an inequality by a variable? Because if you multiply by a variable, the inequality sign is going to be like uncertain because if the variable is negative, the inequality sign has to change change direction in this case we can because of the statement they gave us here that for all positive k num numbers so we know that k is definitely positive if k is positive then it doesn't matter you can multiply both sides by k and it won't change the inequality sign so in this particular case we can multiply both sides by k otherwise we'd have to do something like multiply by k squared if we didn't know if k is positive or negative because when you square k it's going to be positive so therefore you'll be multiplying by a positive number but that will make the, the steps a lot more complicated here. So we can just multiply by k because we know k is positive. So we got k squared plus 9 is less than 6k. And if we rearrange this inequality, we have k squared minus 6k plus 9 is less than 0. Now, this is a quadratic. For us to know the maximum or minimum of a quadratic, we should complete the square. Now, this is going to have a minimum. It's going to have some it have this type of shape and its lowest value is going to be given by when you complete the square what's left outside the bracket now we can see here i can see here that this is actually going to be actually a perfect square right as you can see if you try to complete the square what will happen is you'd have k minus three squared and you've got to take away nine and you have plus nine is less than zero so you end up with k minus three squared is less than zero right now that means that the lowest value this have has is zero all right it's going to hit the horizontal axis at zero and it's going to turn it's going to just turn on it so that means it can't go less than zero the value of uh, of, of this can never be less than zero okay so here it says k minus three squared is less than zero well that's not true it can't be true because you square anything you square any number whether it's negative whether it's positive whether it's zero, it will never be less than zero. It will always be positive, and if this whole thing is zero, it will be zero. So we can say that this is a contradiction. This is a contradiction. Why is this a contradiction? Because k minus 3 squared must always be greater than or equal to zero. Okay? So we can say that as our assumption, our assumption, let me just make my handwriting better leads okay our assumption that k squared plus no k plus k plus 9 over k is less than um, 6 leads to a contradiction therefore okay and this is for k is greater than zero therefore we can say the original the original statement is true which is k plus 9 over k is greater than or equal to 6 for all values of k for all for k values greater than zero sorry for all k values greater than zero okay so that is now 
proved to be a true statement because when we assumed the opposite it gave us a contradiction All right so there's the answer to part 4a okay proved by contradiction 4b is pretty simple as well it says show that the result in part a is not true for all real numbers so it's quite obvious from this wording of the first question where they said k is greater than zero positive so that means i think when you use k equals a, um, a negative number probably my, minus one is probably the easiest one to use that should show that this inequality is false so let's look at the left hand side of this inequality and the right hand side of this inequality the left hand side of the inequality when we put k equals negative one you're going to have minus one plus nine over minus one which gives you minus ten and here you have six this is less than six okay so therefore the the result in part a in part a is not true for all real numbers as k equals negative one shows okay just this is like this is almost like proof by counter example you, you can show one example which shows the statement to be false that means you know the statement is not true for all real numbers so we've proved that it's not true so there's part b that's just worth one mark just showing choosing a value any negative value would probably do it and it shows that that's uh, you know something which is a false statement so there we have it the answer to part 4b um, and that concludes this question other questions from this particular paper can be found in the playlist that will appear in the top right corner of the video at the end you'll also find a playlist here which deals with proof by contradiction from p4 a link to subscribe to my channel on the bottom left and the top left you'll find a link to a video which shows you how to navigate through my channel and find the index pdf forms which you can use to find things you might be looking for thank you for watching and see you soon